All right, and we are live. Jenna, how are you? Hi. What's going on? Hey, everybody. How are you? Just getting uh, started here. We got a full group, and wow, we have already 54 in the chat. Good to see you all. I see Mark. Hi, all right, yeah. we are live. Oh, and I got the double audio. Um, so welcome, everybody. Welcome to the virtual vaults. I just want to do a, a quick little check. I see Scotch Test Dummies. Good to see you. Uh, Mark Broda is in the house. Mark says, everybody safe and healthy, I hope. I think we are. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be in a good position. We got some work to, do, to finally get into. So safe and healthy and uh, in a good place. Kevin Dutcher from Minnesota. Good to see you, Kevin, as always. Uh, Dram Session says, hello, all. Hope you're all staying put, staying well, and drinking a good single malt. Um, wow, we got a lot going on. So yeah. let me be the first to welcome you to the uh, kickoff of the virtual vaults hosted by, well, Jenna, my friend and colleague over here, and myself. Uh, the Virtual Vaults is going to be, as you may have heard from the, the initial announcements, a, a little new initiative we're doing, which is essentially bringing the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society experience of tasting and sharing whiskey together, right to the comfort of your own home through <laughs> this channel right here, YouTube. And so uh, I you think it goes without saying, we're in interesting times right now. And you know, Jenna and I both, along with some of our colleagues, usually are out on the road, hosting tasting events for society members in the country. Given the current situation, we certainly can't do that. Um, but we're glad to be here and, and hoping that, you know, you're not alone in that sense and we can share the experience together. So Jenna, any, anything you want to say? We got a lot, we got a full. No, I'm just excited. Yeah. It's been a while since I've done one of these. So it's so nice to see you and to, to be back in, you know, I wish I was physically, you know, giving out lots of hugs and pouring lots of whiskey, but um, this will have to be second best for now. So I'm just going to do a quick little run through then. You know, Whiskey Entitled's here. Great to have this start the weekend. Yeah, it is a good start. Uh, so if that's, yeah. that's Wally or Charles uh, behind Whiskey Entitled. But yeah, I think this 5 p.m. Eastern time slot is pretty good. Good to see Bob H. here. Uh, as always, Patricia Ray says, ah, that's my sister. Yeah, Spelled that is my sister. <laughs> you know, particularly S-E-E-S-T-E-R. -S -S -E -E okay. Uh, love it. Isaac Middendorf. Good to see you, Isaac. Uh, big Society fan. Jason Coates is in. Yeah, we got a lot going on today. Sandy yeah. says, howdy from Alexandria, Virginia. Right on. I was actually just drinking a Virginia whiskey yesterday, which is pretty unrelated to what we're talking about today, but it just, I was thinking about your state. So uh, got a lot going and let's see, you know, drop us a comment. We'll be, the purpose of today is just to really say hi to everybody, you know, as a members club, the Scotland Whiskey Society, we, we really focus on the members and again, sharing whiskey together. That's the, really the main points. Uh, we will be tasting through how many whiskeys today? Uh, have, four. Yeah, we have. Yeah, okay, four, yeah. Four. We, you know, it's funny not to get ahead of ourselves. We have a lot of these tastings that we're planning right now, and so we sent quite a few whiskeys. I don't think I've had this many untouched samples in probably since I joined the Scotch Whiskey Society two years ago. Uh, there's a lot to go through, and. I think for, have you tasted these yet? Yeah, we should just start by saying. I have you. only tasted one of them. Okay. Um, and so I'm excited. I, I waited just for this moment. So, you know, I could be live and experience this, you know, for the first time with everyone. So I've not. Yeah. So for today, we'll, we'll be tasting these together. Now the four whiskeys what we've chosen for this session were some of the more popular ones from amongst members. Um, and in essence, you know, we wanted to, to choose whiskeys that we thought many would have at home. And I have to say myself, I've tasted two of the four uh, only. And so like many of our tasting events, this is going to be a real time sort of first impression. Yeah. So you want to go through the lineup just to introduce what we'll be tasting? Yeah. Through? Um, so we're going to start, I guess, all. Um, so we're doing all Space Eye malts today. Um, we're going to start with 48.109, which is white mold wine. So if you have this, go grab it and grab a glass. Um, and then we're going to go to 72.69 up the garden path. <laughs> and then we are going to get into some peat, which is, you know, my favorite. That's my love language um, with 108.18, which is a space side peat, which I'm excited to, to really dig into. Um, I don't really get an opportunity to taste a lot of space side Pete, so mainland Pete, so I'm excited for that. And then we have Big Swirl, which I haven't tasted yet. So Darrell tasted it and he loved it, but I have not had an opportunity to taste it yet. So I'm excited to taste that one. 
All right. So I think that's one of the ones I've tasted. And just maybe we should just take a, a quick note. I know I'm just reading through the comments and a lot of you guys watching right now are, are current members of the Scotch Wine Whiskey Society. I'm assuming many others are not as well. So just what, what it is essentially, the society is well, essentially the, the world's the now. Leading ever. <laughs> okay. It is. Yeah. It is, okay. Well, it, we'll start there. It is a whiskey club. Uh, it was founded, you know, back in 1983. So just over, yeah, we're, about as old as I am, I should say, but um, not to date myself. Um, yeah, and it was at a time when, when whiskey, Scotch whiskey was was very different in the way that it was enjoyed at sort of on a global scale. You know, mo most people who were into whiskey were drinking the big blends, um, which is fundamentally a different style of whiskey than what we'll be tasting, which is single cask whiskey. You know, a single cask whiskey, all the contents come from a single cask. I realize this is redundant for some of you, but just as a quick little refresher, uh, the society was founded you know, by a gentleman who simply walked into a distillery, tasted whiskey from the cask, and noted, hey, look, this is this is amazing. It's very different from the whiskey you would buy at his local shop. Obviously, it's really strong. It hadn't been watered down or, or diluted, hadn't been really gone through any filtering, and it was na it was natural in color and presentation. So it was really, it was really, and it had bought the cask, brought it home to Edinburgh, shared it with his friends. I could only imagine at the time, you know, walking the distillery and buying an entire cask was probably the best sales day uh, of the month, you know, for the distillery. And now it's, it's, it's whiskey is so popular and single cask whiskey is so popular. But uh, this, this idea of tasting whiskey as if you were in the warehouse yourself, um, free of any, any additives or anything else, was just, a, it was a un, unique phenomenon then. And so the club was built around that. And it's just this idea of sharing whiskey together and discovering, you, you know, alongside each other. And, you know, our clubs evolved. We, we have tens of thousands of members around the world now in, in roughly 10, 20 different countries. Um, but, you know, it all comes down to this idea of, of the best whiskey is only best when shared. So we go around and we have, well, I have samples. You, you have the bottle. You can, you can show a bottle if you don't mind, yeah. Jenna. But, you know, all of these are single cask whiskeys. Well, I should say three of the first four. And it's just a unique style. They're all, they're all I think, unique in their own way. And the idea is that once you find one, for instance, the first one, which one is that you just pulled up? Is that the 48? That is 48.109. How many bottles does it say? Because it's so, a label, this, it says the number um, of bottles. Yeah, so there's um, uh, 237 bottles of this particular cask were um, able to be released. And it is at 62.3%. And so um, hand sanitizer quality, you know. Um, and then yeah. it is a first fill barrel ex bourbon um, space side whiskey. So I think I know a lot of you guys have, have asked this before is how do they come up with the names? So this one's so cast 48.109. So 48 is we're not, we don't put the name of the distillery on there for a couple of reasons. You know, it, for one, we let the whiskey okay. do the talking. Uh, no two casts are ever alike. And so we don't really want to stereotype any one flavor into the, the distillery, but we do have a little code system you can look up. Uh, the name of this white mold might, uh, excuse me, white mold wine. That was not the uh, easiest cast name. So whoever came up with that one is a bit more clever than I am. It uh, the name the name is supposed to evoke the, the experience of the whiskey. It's it, it's conceived by our tasting panel. It's quite a fun process. I think a lot of you guys and comment. I'd be curious as we go through this if you guys have any interesting SMWS whiskey names that you'd like to see implemented. In, add them to the chat box and we'll we'll start right back here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, the names come from, you have to taste a whiskey and then it, it should come to you from that you know experience alone. But if you guys have clever names that you'd like to see implemented, we'll, we'll build a, I promise we'll, we'll, we'll build a library there and put that we'll use in the future. Um, so let's, I'm gonna go down to the first yeah, one. Let's get into it. I'm ready for, I'm ready for some whiskey. So yeah, I am too, you know, it, it's funny. We'll, when we do it, when you do it for professionally, it's it's your life. You're always talking about whiskey. It's on your mind. But you would think that you're always enjoying it. But when you're working, you're working. Right. Now is a nice time to finally step back and just actually enjoy a dram. Right. Or four, or four. No pressure. You're not trying to, you know, dig everything out of it. It's just, yeah, you yeah. can really just sit down and enjoy it. And if any of you guys have these at home, please, you know, chime in and let us know what you think of them, what you're getting on the nose, what you're getting on the palate. Um, it'd be fun to compare. Yeah, so Nathan Shulkovich here from New Jersey. Welcome. Sorry, guys, I'm just catching up. Becca, also from a lot of, a lot of people from New Jersey. Becca, good to have you here. Kyle Cummins is in the house. I see that. Eric, good to see you. Eric Waits. 
if you guys know Eric from Instagram behind one of one of the uh, brains behind from barrel to bottle on Instagram. Han Solo is officially here and <laughs> he shot first with G15.4 thermonuclear banana. I mean, WTF. So we, we won't get distracted. G15.4. I love that. That, that was a good one. That was a good one from a couple of years ago. Yeah. Um, anyway, Jonathan Bingham is here. Let's see. Whiskey Entitled says there needs to be a quarantine bottle. And I like to think there's a quarantine collection here. You know, it's a. Are you a. Any you, bottle could be a quarantine bottle. Oh man, so I, there's a, there's a lot going on. I want to just kind of stay focused for just for the, for this moment here. So 48109 white mold wine. So let's pull the specs too. It's it's a seven year old first fill bourbon barrel. First fill bourbon. So straight, likely straight from the U.S. Barrel went over to Scotland and then was filled with the spirit that you have here, sixty two point three percent. What's your first impression? Um, so I get the nose almost gives me um, fruit roll ups. I get like that fruit rolly kind of sweet right up. Front. Um, yeah, it, 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 there is like a confectionery sugar note for me. Yeah. Um, it's funny because I'm, I'm thinking of the name white mold wine. I'm trying to both taste it blind, but not have any, pre, you know, exactly predetermined ideas of what it's going to be like. But I, I'm looking for sort of this, the white grape, sort of light tannic acidic note. Um, I get a little bit of it, but I do get that sugar. Like the sugar is pretty high. Yeah. Right, right off the yeah. nose. But this is in our um, sweet, what our uh, sweet, sweet fruity, and yellow. Yeah. fruity and mellow flavor profile. So that makes sense. Makes, I can't pronounce it. White mold wine and sweet fruity. And I know. It's a, tongue, it's a tongue twister. Okay. Well, cheers. Cheers. Oh, cheers. First, first, all of you. Yes. first round of the virtual vaults. Um, obviously, these are not the vaults behind us. The vaults is our, our headquarters. Yeah. In they room. are the vaults. Okay, you okay, you got that. Yeah. <laughs> I've got the the books. You know that this, this inverted camera is something I have to get used to, but um, okay, I'm drinking this. Whiskey entitled. Cheers. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Hmm. It's intensely sweet at first. Yes, but then there is a savory aspect to this whiskey. Um, I don't want to say it's uh, like salty, but there is like a like a brown butter kind of creamy saltiness that I'm getting like on the very back of my palate. Hmm. I don't think nose, nose and palate don't quite match for me on this one. Different? Something different. Yeah, it's a, for me, it's a bit more um, on the nose. Like it was sweet at first, but it, it the fruit, it's very fruit forward on the palate. Like right away, the mm -hmm. nose is a bit more herbal or it's more like a farmyard or probably like a malting barn type of aroma. But, you know, 62.3%. Palatable, but really, really concentrated flavors. Yeah. I'm going to try to open them up with a little bit of water. And it just totally just engulfs your whole palate. Like it's, it's got great mouthfeel. I mean, it coated every little nook and cranny. Zach Kemble, I get a nice fruit leather. Oh, so Zach, if you guys know Zach, um, SMWS members, or Zach is another one of our friends and colleagues. He's based in Orlando. It uh, covers the whole Florida market, essentially. We call it a market, but the state of Florida and, and really the southeast beyond, because I, I shouldn't say just Florida. He has been hosting tasting events pre-quarantine uh, <laughs> in, in Atlanta. He's been doing them, and, and you know he's been with us for oh, coming up on a year now. So he's been expanding a lot. So that's Zach. Give, you can harass him or give him a hard time in the chat, please. You know. <laughs> yes, harass Zach. <laughs> um, yeah. so D asked if it was more of like a sea salt caramel, and I could see that. Yeah, there's definitely a sweetness to it, um, but for me, at least, I am definitely getting that kind of salty, savoryish note on the very back palate. So that's a great way to describe it. I've added a bit of water, and you know, it's funny with space side whiskey. Well, not just space side whiskeys, but I would say predominantly these sort of younger uh, bourbon barrel matured spirits. Uh, adding water tends to bring up more. 
fruity notes for, for me. I, I just find a correlation there. But for me, this one is actually makes it a bit more sort of rugged, earthy type of you know aroma, at least on the nose. Right. You know, sort of the inverse of what I would expect, but but I like it. It's a, for me, it's a lot more complex. And I think it's yeah, I've had a little bit. I'm sure it's sort of at 62.3 percent, which is crazy high. It's probably around 55 for me. I'm just guessing now. Still high. Yes, water. I just added water, and it pulled out way more fruit notes. Like the saltiness that I was tasting really kind of dissipates, and you're getting a lot of those more like apple. It's like pear like kind of stewed fruit coming through for me on that. Yeah. Water definitely makes a difference. Yeah. So Isaac mentions that he's really into distillery 10. Uh, this is 48 that we're doing right now, but distillery 10, um, which, you know, Scott has been hitting hard. Scott, I presume Scott Bruno from Scotch test dummies. And I know Scott has been hitting distillery 10 pretty hard, uh, hoping for something in the next outturn uh, and then ask Scott for any recs. Well, I won't, I won't answer Scott's question about the recs, but, um, I'll just spoiler alert. We will be seeing some more coming out in the coming months. Like I'm not quite sure if next month, well, actually I should say our next outturn is next week. It is April already. So next Tuesday will be our official April outturn. Um, we will be, Jen and I will be back doing a preview tasting on Monday evening, just before to just sort of give an early chance to, to talk through the whiskeys. It'll be our first time tasting them as well. And then the following day, you know, if, if for anybody who tunes in, you have a good idea of at least what our, you know, open and honest opinions are about those whiskeys and sort of help guide you in, in your selection when they're released the next day. I uh, can't say if there's a 10 in there. I, I'm not quite sure if there will be this yeah, much. Um, I do know for a fact there there will be more coming soon, but just not quite sure if it's uh, this month or not. We had the, a 10, gosh, this was probably back in 2018. I think it was Big Wake Sofa. Do you remember that? You were in that. I, I, yeah, I didn't get a bottle of that, one. that one. one. You were in that one. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That one was one of my favorite tents that I've had. That one was just perfect. <laughs> Kevin says, have you tried Pretty in Pink? That was another one. That was a nine-year-old. I, I know because I bought a bottle of that. Um, a lot of people probably think, well, you know, then do you buy, buy SMWS whiskey? I certainly do. Uh, you know, I was a member before I was, you know, now working for the company. And I was just, and that's actually that is what, why it started. Uh, but yeah, that was when I bought Pretty in Pink and then the Big Wig Sofa. I missed out on that one. You were talking about that a couple of years yeah, ago. Yeah, that one was really stellar. Yeah. Um, I really enjoyed that one. Yeah. Okay, so did you add water to this one? I'm gonna, I, I want to kind of yeah. dive along, but. Yeah, no, I did add water and water definitely brings out way more fruit than it does without. So that kind of salty tang in the back um, goes away. Jason Coates says, my favorite uh, name so far was Abuna. My cloak is on fire. I did like that name, too. My cloak is on fire. Um, good whiskey, too. I mean, as I remember it. So. Oh. This is good. This is a good starting point. I think, it, you know, it's, it's 5 p.m. Eastern. I'm in Chicago. Jenna's in L.A. So neither of us are in Eastern time zone. And I was going to say, it's a good afternoon, sort of a sunny afternoon. And... Uh, a good two o'clock gram for LA. Yeah, and here in in the Midwest, <laughs> we have been locked in. You know, I've been locked in for three weeks, but the sun's finally shining. It, it, it is evocative of sort of a springtime. It um, is afternoon. Let's yeah, very much so. And I think I'm I'm liking it more with the water actually, um, just because it's so bright and very fruit forward. So I don't usually add water a lot to the whiskeys that I drink. You know, casually if I'm just at home, um, you know, I love just cast strength kind of as they are. I um, mean, I don't typically add water when I'm drinking casually. So I'm glad I followed suit and did that because I'm, I'm liking this a lot more with water. Yeah, I'm curious if, if you guys don't mind, because um, Jenna, I know you you were really big on just going pure cast strength for a while. And I was, yeah. I wasn't trying to sway you anyway, but I was like really advocating, add the water, add the water, just watch it change. I, I don't really know that if I have a preference, but I'm curious if you guys don't mind commenting below. Do you go, do you add water or not? Uh, just a simple yes or no, just to kind of pull everybody here. I tend to do it yes now, but sometimes, and maybe more so during Corona times, I will just go straight cast strength. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> get to the goods, but 
Um, um, Whiskey Untitled, when our next outturn is Tuesday, April 7th. So yeah, yeah. that is the new outturn. So yeah, so the, the outturns, just in general, you know, our main outturns, the first, generally the first Tuesday of every month. Uh, this month, obviously, the first was, what is it? The corona time. What, it's the date. What is it? The third today? Yeah, so two days ago. So Wednesday was the first. So yeah, so Tuesday is the first Tuesday. Uh, and then we'll have what we call our mid-month outturn. A uh, smaller selection, but sort of no different in terms of quality or anything. But mid-month outturn is usually the third Tuesday every, every month. And then in between, you'll, you'll see in, in the emails or social posts, we'll release you know unique casks here and there, other spirits. Uh, today, we just released a single cask rum. So it doesn't fall within our first and third Tuesday release schedule. But there's still a lot going on every month. Um, so just uh, some feedback here. D-Lane says, I add for higher ABVs. This is, this is going back to the question of adding water. Um, Michael Taylor says, sometimes a little bit. And Ilsley J, I'm sorry for the, the, the name is Ilsley J, if, if that's how you're pronouncing it. But uh, it says, taste straight, then add water. And that's what we did earlier, is, is taste yeah. and meat first, and then sort of assess. Um, Alan Weber says, depends on the drama. It, it only hits part of my mouth, it needs water. Um, yeah, yeah. Matthew Baird says it depends on strength. IDK, if that's right or wrong, I, I don't think no right, or wrong. right or wrong. Yeah, but water can sometimes make it more interesting. Yeah, I don't think there's a right or wrong, you know, way to, to drink it. I mean, but when when t t tasting in general, you know, alcohol tends to mask, you know, flavors to a certain extent. So it's not right or wrong, but if, if you you will find that if you add water it will tend to release un or unlock more flavors than if you had not. But I mean, every no two pellets are alike. So I would say dial it down to your own preferred strength and sort of go from there. Malt Review says add water, explore. And that's really about yeah. it. It's the exploration, you know. That's gonna be my question to you. So if we're, if you're reviewing a whiskey or, um, you know, maybe it is best to add water, you try it neat and with water, and then you can give it a, a fair review on, on both ends versus just having it neat. Um, do you do that when you're reviewing a whiskey or you're really trying to dissect a whiskey? Do you do both neat and with water? Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, for me, it's become a bit subconscious in the sense that I, I don't think about it as much. I mean, I'll taste, I, I do look at the bottle and I'll note, note the ABV. So the first one was 62.3%. I know at that level, I'm, pro I'm good at add water regardless. So I will have water ready. But if it's a whiskey, it's around... 50 to 55 uh, percent I may or may not and sometimes if I'm in a hurry I don't really drink whiskey in a hurry often but there have been some times where it's hey I need to go I need to uh, do something you know work related and it's the evening and I need to pour a whiskey to do it so uh, maybe I won't have time <laughs> to grab water it's first world problems I guess but um, I haven't done it as much but yeah I need to get better at adding with or at, at adding whiskey I'm okay at adding whiskey. I need to get better at adding water <laughs> just to, just to compare it. It's probably good to, you know, expand my palate in that way too. So I will do a better job of tasting whiskeys with water too. Yeah. Hill country single malt says taste need first and add water to compare often because our is greater than 60% exactly as, as I kind of, I agree with you there. Uh, let's move on. So 72.69 called up the garden path. Up the garden um, path. Another space side whiskey from a first fill bourbon barrel. Yep. And this one's a bit lower, 58.7%. And it's a bit older too, so 11 years old. The, the first one was seven, so, you know, quite a bit more time in the wood. And see how that, obviously, different spirit, 72.69, different distillery, um, similar cask. So obviously, it's going to be a fundamentally different whiskey. Right. But... This one is way tamer, honestly, than the nose for me than the first one. Yeah, I have to say, you know, we, yeah, at our, at our tasting events, when we do these in person, we like to do blind tastings. So we'll just pre-pour them for all society members or, or you know, and their friends. They're, they're open to anyone who wants to come. But we'll, we'll pour them all blind and then taste without knowing anything. So some, sometimes with that, when you don't know the ABV, I like that. I like to know nothing about the whiskey if I can. Right. It's As the host of the events, it's, it's not easy because I usually have to pour it. But this, to me, it's 58.7. I would think it's lower. It gets surprising. Yeah. Mark says 72.69 is gone already. You know what, Mark? I think all but one of these has sold out. Um, 
and we picked we and we picked few, not not to sit here and promote whiskeys to, to buy, but we, we wanted to pick whiskeys that were popular and we had good feedback from members, just to give you all a chance to participate if you'd like. And we'll we'll be doing more a lot of that. We'll be announcing the whiskeys in advance. So what do you think of this one? I don't haven't tasted yet. Um not nearly as sweet like right up front. You know, it's it's more approachable. It really draws you in. Oh yeah, this is way like these are deeper flavors to me. Whereas the first one was very bright and alive. This is a little deeper, a little more velvety. Um oh, yeah. but the palette's a little stronger than the first one to me. Even oh, though it's lower ABV. Yeah, the, the aroma was it's like it's tricky because it, it's like a little Venus flytrap. Like it uh <laughs> that's good. For me, for me it was just really kind of a bit more mellow. And again, it's in comparison to one that was really intense before. But wow, that that's delivers. Yeah, that's that's all in. Yeah, uh, definitely a greater oak influence. Mm -hmm. You can you can taste the fact that it's been matured for a bit longer. Right. Um, obviously the, the, you know, the first full bourbon barrel, so the, which means obviously it came over from the US, it used to hold bourbon. There are some of the bourbon characteristics of sort of a heavy charred caramel and some vanilla and a bit of like a, a, a burnt citrus in there. That that carries forward, but it has a sweet malt, multi, you know, backbone, you know, from the spirit itself. Um, I think it's, I think I am liking this one right away. I like this one a lot. I like them all. <laughs> yeah, I, I shouldn't say, I like the first one too, but this is, there's something about this one that I think is really, it's captivating, and, you know? And this one, um, so PJ Hartman wrote that it's spicy on um, spicy on the palate, floral honey. I agree completely. There's definitely a level of spice here that I'm getting right on the front of my tongue, um, right in the front of my mouth, and it's pretty explosive. Um, and so this this has a very nice spiced quality about it. Um, so I, I, I completely agree. Yeah, 72.6. And so this whiskey here has been categorized in what we call the spicy and sweet flavor profile, which is one of our 12. We have the, the first one we call sweet, fruity, mellow. So all casts that sort of deliver uh, a similar tasting experience are categorized in these different profiles. So spicy and sweet does, you know, really kind of, I think this one is appropriately categorized. Yes. Not that, not that any are not, but some, some are really kind of harder to really pinpoint as to what profile they would be. This is a classic spicy and sweet. I agree. For me. Yeah, this is really this is really nice. Add water. Yeah, I'm gonna follow your lead. Matthew J. Ryan is in the house. Uh, Matt Ryan, a, a big lover of the peat. Peat, or more specific, uh, a, a characteristic of peat called that he likes to call tar. Um, Erwin says, "Ben, nice interview on Aquavita." Uh, thank you, Erwin. Yeah, if you guys don't know Aquavite, uh, I think most of you probably do on YouTube. Uh, Roy in Glasgow, just a great guy. A huge whiskey evangelist. I would su suggest subscribing to his channel. Uh, he has not paid me to say that, but you know, I think we've all learned a lot from Roy, and so I had a chance to, to go on, and I appreciate the the kind words. Um, apparently, Clark says, "Enjoying a 72.7, 72.79 chocolate bourbons, a nice hearty dram." Yeah, that was one from what, a couple months back now. I want to say, mm -hmm. um, and that that was that was turned out to be a really popular one, chocolate bourbons. I think that was fantastic too. So Han Solo, 72.56, absolute SMWS legend. All right. From from the legend Han Solo himself. <laughs> so I appreciate that, Han. Glad you enjoyed that one. Uh, Mark needs to start the grill for dinner. Great to see everyone on a virtual happy hour with the best SMWS, pe SMWS peeps in the country. Thanks, Mark. Uh, there are not many of us, <laughs> so we're, we're a small team. You know, we <laughs> fundamentally represent like 25% of uh, our US team here. So. Uh, but I appreciate that. That's that's kind of you. Um, we are a small but mighty team. Th thanks for joining us, Mark. Good to have you. And we'll we'll see you next time, of course. Uh, Mark, another YouTube plug. Scotch for Dummies. He, he is twenty five percent of the Scotch for Dummies. I'm sure you guys, a lot of you guys know Scotch for Dummies. Give him a, a follow or subscribe if you can. Um, so yeah. So with water, the water on this brings out almost a chocolatey note. Um, for me, I'm always like a, a slight cocoa, chocolatey like, creaminess about it that I'm getting with water on this. Yeah, it's like a, oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, so it, it's really improved, I think. <laughs>
with, with a bit of water. Like it's, it's not bitter. It's not like a bitter, it's like a milk chocolate for yes. me. No, it's not. That's a good way to, yeah, it's a creamy, it's creamy. It's a, a creamy chocolatey undertone. Oh yeah. The texture is really brilliant. I like that a lot. Yeah. Up the garden path. Um, garden path. The garden of chocolate, evidently, but it's a, uh, I don't, the, the tasting notes that are on the bottle, if you don't mind, I'll read. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so it says, uh, the garden path meandered past tomato plants, bramble bushes, and honeysuckle before entering a pine forest with wasabi, caramel, and fudge. So maybe that's the fudge that uh, we're getting with water. So it is in there. Yeah, I, and I saw the question of who writes the tasting notes. You know, it's, it's interesting. I think... The Scottish Wine Whiskey Society is uh, operates. We don't really use the term, but it operates as an independent bottler. In the fact that we're not distilling the, the whiskey, um, we are really hunting really the most remarkable casks from all different distilleries. Um, but it's it's a unique. You know, the names come from sort of the selection and tasting process, which is unique. We have a tasting panel made up of you know pro ta pro tasters, which I don't know that we're quite there. I, I call us. I consider us just really. <laughs> Big whiskey geeks who, you yeah. know, do maybe we're professional. I would I, love so to be I, on that panel. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I would love to be on that panel too. No, I think we are professional, but you know, these I, I will put these, you know, decades of experience. So yeah. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Uh, way ahead of you know, top of the game as far as as you know, Scotch whiskey is concerned. Um, they get together every week at the vaults, which is our you know our home base. The picture okay. that's on the bottle is the vaults, and they essentially taste test blind through a sample of, of, of you know, maturing casks from our stock. It's and literally a dream job. Yeah, it, 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 well, yeah. That is like a dream to be able yeah. to every week go to the vaults, which I'm sure I'm, I haven't been yet, but I know you've been, are beautiful to blind taste these incredible casks. I mean, that's the dream. I, I, I'd like to, well, this is self-serving. I like to think our jobs are dreamful as well, but yeah. even within that, yeah, one can always be bigger. <laughs> And yeah, of course, who wouldn't want to just get to pick these all the time? And yeah. um, anyway, so the names come from the, the, the process of what I suspect would be uh, very serious, but highly intoxicated Scots going through, sitting in the comfort of the vaults, these big leather you know, sofas, and uh, just kind of letting their minds run wild. And so they come up with the names. Uh, so yeah, anyway. That's a good one. I like it. So where are we going next? I, I, you call it. I mean, I, I think the, the 108, you know, I'm going to hold on. Give me, if you don't mind. Take one, your time. One time. Oh, yeah. I'm going to read through some of these. Um, I know we skipped a question from Omid. He was asking, mm -hmm. as whiskey drinkers, do you guys enjoy a good Anejo tequila? And what's your favorite? I personally am not a tequila person, so I cannot uh, chime in on that. But do you drink tequila? Yeah, um, unfortunately, I much respect to Anejo tequila. It, it's not something I'm as familiar with. I mean, I, I know it, but not to the level that I could really speak to, like some other spirits. Um, whisk, whiskey, I think rum is something I'm, I'm into. Armagnac, yeah. and, Armagnac. Uh, is, is a big one for me, and, and perhaps cognac. Agave spirits, I'm sort of venturing into now, but I've been trying to really kind of keep my focus over the years to really go in depth with obviously starting with whiskey right so that's um, I, I think that's uncharted territory for me but if anybody else if you're familiar with yeah. tequila or, or have experience or drink it often you know please jump in the chat comment below so um added bonus you get to hang out with charlie mclean okay apparently clark yeah yeah exactly clark uh, <laughs> the comment was about going to the vaults you know do you have to be a member so it is a members club uh you know, so yes, you do have to be a member. You present your member ID card that you get when you sign up. I mean, even for if you sign up in the U.S., of course, to your member of the society on a, on a global basis. Um, but you can go to the vaults, and you're allowed to bring up to three non-member guests with you. So, but you do have to go with a member essentially. Um, and Steve Krantz would have been to the vaults the first of May, but of course that trip has been canceled. I feel your pain, Steve. I had my Scotland trip canceled as well. But uh, here we are tasting amazing whiskey still. So 
And, and Steve, I also had my May Scotland trip canceled as well. I think a lot of us did it. It's a great time to go. Yeah. Um, obviously, it's festival season in Scotland, and those were all canceled this year. Uh, look, I think the good news is we'll, it will all be back. You know, it will be back. Our love for whiskey isn't going anywhere. Um, I just hope, you know, it's a, it's a swift and speedy recovery. So, yeah. You want to move on? To the Let's do it. All right. So 108.18, the one I'm most excited for. <laughs> you, you, you introduced it. I mean, you're, you've been, yeah, you were, before we started this, she was telling me, she, I can't wait for this one. Okay. So 108.18 is going to be the next one. Pancetta Roulette. Um, so this is a seven-year peated space side. Um, so ex-bourbon and it is at 63.8%. And um, I just get excited about young peated whiskeys. I really have an affinity for young Isla whiskeys. I love young Isla whiskeys. I think there is so much character and it is just like a, you know, treasure trove of flavors to kind of dig through. So I really am a big fan of those. But um, to see a seven year, a young peated space side, I got very excited about this. Um, so I'm just going to read the tasting notes on the bottle and then. I will get into it. So um, this says, unlike almost any other peated malt, this is a mix of huge farmyard notes and with water, intense saltiness as well. A thrilling wee beastie. So super stoked for this one. It sounds like you on paper. Like uh, it's Jenna. I would write just the title Jenna's whiskey. Yeah. The word we. We is one of my favorite words. I say yeah. it all the time. Hey, got a, yeah. got a minute for a wee chat? It's yeah. uh, yeah, We've got also the number one social media platform in China. There but you go. Anyway. Okay. You ready? Did you taste it already? Oh, sorry. Well, yeah, you were, I mean, I, you were, like, couldn't wait. Oh, cheers. Oh, cheers. 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 Cheers to all of you out there too. All right. So. I mean, you said the word we, I was like, damn, I gotta, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, this is just the smell of peat is, it is intoxicating it is just i i could just you know gush on about it like it's a you know lover of mine yeah i mean it's i think it's well why don't you why don't you start off with your you know your yeah your, then. so off the cut i mean there is there is definitely a wee saltiness to the the nose but it's not as like intense or as um it doesn't like take up my whole nose, you know, kind of like a, a heavy Isla, you know, peated whiskey. It's definitely a little softer for me um, on the peat, but still very much there, still very evident. Um, all right, I'm gonna taste it. Yeah, cheers. While you're doing that, so Matthew Baird says 108.18 should be arriving Tuesday for me. I'm excited. Oh, we, we're a few days too early, but you know, uh, Drop, drop okay. us a DM. Let us know what you think, Matthew. I think. What, what do you think, Jenna? Sorry, you're having a moment, and I'm no. I'm, I'm like in the zone. Just ignore me. Just, but um, no, just roll with the zone. As soon as it hits your tongue, it's mouthfeel. You can just. It's so silky and viscous and creamy, and it just latches onto your tongue, and it is like my mouth is watering as I'm talking about it because. It, I'm I'm big on mouthfeel. When it comes to whiskey, that is that's a huge factor for me. You know whether I like a whiskey or not, or if I'm gonna you know score a whiskey high or whatnot. Um, mouthfeel is very important to me, um, just because it's it's all part of the experience. And this has a great viscosity. It has a great mouthfeel. It totally just it's like the claw it just latches on, and it's it's really lovely. Um, as far as flavor goes. Um, it, the peat is up front and it's there again. It's not as coastal, like salty, briny as, um, a lot of other, uh, or peated whiskeys, but it's, it's really beautiful. And there is a, a slight sweetness that hits the tip of your tongue. I'm not sure what it is yet. Um, I got to go back in and investigate, but it's, it's beautiful. I love this. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, when it comes to peated whiskeys, I think most people, especially when you're just getting a whiskey, a malt whiskey specifically for the first time, you think of the island of Isla, which, right. you know, famous distilleries from Isla Lafroy, Gardbeg, um, Lagavulin, 
And, you know, for most people, I think those are really tough to wrap your head around and enjoy when you're just getting into it. I mean, I feel like for most people, there's a little bit of palate sort of development you need, yeah. which, which is a thing. I mean, you really train your palate. I yeah. really appreciate it. Um, mainland, you, you know, peated whiskeys are different. And, and if you just think about it, peat is essentially bricks of earth that you cut up and you throw on the kiln to, to that's drying the, the, you know, the malted barley. And the, that smoke that's created from, from the burning peat bonds to the malted barley. And then and obviously that, that is transferred out down to the, dish, the uh, excuse me, the distillation process. Um, and so when you think about what's in the earth, like when you cut peat from the mainland, you get this. When you cut peat from an island, you're getting a lot of the sort of coastal influences, the seaweeds and dead oceanic matter that's been decayed, you know? And I think when you burn that, all that substance, it, it's very different from what you would get here and sort of the yeah. rolling plains of, of, of the mainland. And it, it's, a, it's a much more medicinal and really yeah. intense. And I think for most people, it's not as approachable as something like this, which is, I think the, the perfect segue in a pita whiskey. Yeah. It's smoky, but it's not, I don't want to use the word off-putting because a lot of people, shout out Matthew Ryan, love love that sort of medicinal notes, but it's easier to enjoy earlier on in your own personal whiskey sort of exploration. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So I like it. This, it the peat is still intense. The smoke is It really is. Intense. Yeah, it's, it's very much there. the mouthfeel on this is so good. <laughs> Han, Han Solo, God, I, love, I love that Han Solo is here. I'm just a big fan <laughs> um, <laughs> of whiskey and Star Wars, but a peated 108 is super rare, and it is it is pretty rare. Um, we've been lucky to get a few peated casts from, from Distillery 108. David Farrell says, oh man, I'm, I'm trying, I'm, I apologize, I'm trying to read these comments, but like the, the spirit is just attacking my tongue right mm -hmm. now. It is. It gets sweet. It's aggressive, but sweet. Oh, sorry. I'm having an out of body experience. Um, this is this is a good one. Drinking 108.17. This is 108.18. So, so the cast before it oh. 108.17 right now, and it's heated and delicious. Big fan of the distillery. Totally agree. Uh, Jonathan Bingham says 42.45 cocktails on a tugboat is a Highland Pete that I think might be similar. Similar. I will say this. We won't get too into it, Jonathan. But 42 is actually a, an Island distiller, distillery. Um, not far from the island of Isla. It's not from Isla, but and it's and it's a very lightly peated one, but but fundamentally very different from like this yeah. sort of raw medicinal notes of Isla peat. Um, and then Kevin Dutcher says, "I'm sipping 93.114. Whoever picked this one is uh, they want to, oh, that's I'm cute. Sorry. That's cute, Kevin. Um, 93.114. We call it barbecue and fish nets. Um, I had a chance to to make that cast pick myself last year, and we've released it as a you." Oh, you got it there. If you you've seen that, everybody loved this. I I mean, I'm I'm flattered, you guys. I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Uh, I've liked it. Yeah, I think some people <laughs> said that was their favorite of the year. I, I, look, I, I tasted. It, I thought this is incredible as well. So it's not. I, I can't take credit for it. I just made the pick. But um, yeah, that's that's another well, sort of coastal whiskey, different different one. Um, not to get ahead on that, but. I'm glad you enjoyed that. You will be seeing more from from our U.S. team's involvement and in making some picks as U.S. exclusives uh, coming soon. Not giving anything away, but just I'm glad you enjoyed that. So, you know, stay tuned. Uh, <laughs> anyone try 16.38 Acme Ghost Repellent? Yes, I've had that one, of course, if anyone else has interested in that. But that is another Highland Pete, which I think is just fantastic. Um, anyway, thanks, Scotch. So it's a great bottle, too. All right. Anyway, there's a lot going on. Mayor is here as well. Good to see you, Mayor. Big swirl out of stock already. You know, we got a lot of those, and we will be getting into that. But, uh, yeah, that was uh, one of the more popular ones we put out lately. Yeah. So. I'm excited to taste that one. But to cap off our, our peat talk. Um, yeah, I yeah, think, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I think I, I really do think that this is a bottle for people who love peat and love that aggressive just attack on your palate um, with peat or people who are just trying to get into peat. I think this really could fit the bill for, for both, you know, people who are just getting into it and people who already love it. Um, it's a, it's a really good segue into those more peated malts. I know it took me a long time to love Pete. Um, the first peated whiskey I ever had, I, it was, you know, yeah. it was bad. Um, and I just kept at it and now it's like all I want to drink. So, um, 
if you're not into peat, keep at it. Keep exploring. They're all so different. Um, there's a, a whole world of amazing whiskeys out there that are peated that you'd be missing out on. So don't give up. <laughs> yeah. And I, and I would say this is a, a, not to be redundant, but this is a good starting point. And not just this cast, because, you know, look, every, every cast that we have is so limited in terms of they, they come and go. Right. Not many bottles, you know, we were looking at around. This was 242. 242 in the world. And so, uh, you know, uh, each country we're, we're sharing that. So in the U.S., we may have gotten 60 bottles total. And um, but but if you when you look, you know, with our, our release coming out or any release moving forward, if you look at the the, the listing on SMWSA.com, you can see, you know, obviously the region. And if there's a Highland or or Space Side, you know, two the two big regions in the mainland, well, two of two of them um, within the green sort of color coding peated profile. That's, I think, a good place to start. But I would say, as always, just call it, call our member services team and just, just, just bug us and we'll talk, we'll, we'll find one for you if you don't want to go search on your own. So. Yes. Happy to make recommendations. <laughs> Chip Stone says, Drew, a huge crowd. Everyone in the apartment came to the living room. All two of us. Yes. Okay. I was like, wow. What, how many people are you uh, quarantining with? <laughs> uh, Bob says, it took me three years to appreciate peated scotch. I'm a fan. Yeah. It took me some time too. Yeah. Um, I have to avoid anything over 43. Delane, I, I, I used to avoid anything over 43% ABV and now I have graduated. You've, con congratulations. You have graduated. <laughs> um, enjoy cast ring. Thanks to SMWS. Still not there yet for Pete. Yeah, give it give it time. Listen, not everybody's yeah. going to love Pete anyway. You might you might try to force it and then not like it. Don't don't feel like you're a lesser whiskey drinker if you don't like Pete. No. It's just, for most people, it does take a little bit of time. And there's no timeline, you know, whiskey, there are so many whiskeys out there, you know, to explore that you could do this for, you know, until you're a hundred years old and not be able to taste everything. So there, there's no timeline, take your time and, and just enjoy it. Just enjoy the process. So I'm into this one as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm into all of them. I, I yeah, well, <laughs> it, it's just good. It's good to be really, I'm enjoying just getting into these whiskeys and I'm glad you guys are all, you know, doing this with us too. I wish we can go side by side with everyone, but that'll come soon. Um, but I, I, this, this one, these three in a row have been all very different. Very different. What do we say? They're all from space side. They're all, all American Oak for the most part. And just very, very different. But that's so, too, like, you know, people say, Oh, I don't, you know, cause I hear it too. Oh, I don't like whiskeys from space side or I don't like whiskeys from, you know, Campbelltown, everything is so different. It's, it, you can't really categorize. And this is a great example of that, that we have three different Speyside whiskeys that are so incredibly different. So um, just keep exploring. Don't pull anything out. All right. You wanna to go to number four? So this is our fourth, okay. this is our fourth and final. I just, one question I saw that popped up, uh, was getting titled to ask about the, the free shipping. I just wanna address that real quick. Yeah. So. Um, yes, I know a lot, a lot of members no, notice that through the month of March, sort of into the month of March, we, you know, as this sort of pandemic developed, um, we saw an uptick in, in really the overall demand just for our whiskey, just people planning to stay at home for a while and, and looking to spend that time just at least exploring a good whiskey. Uh, I, I feel that as well. I think it's get, helping us get by a lot and especially right now, but um, so we, we made a, a unique decision that we hadn't told me before, which is to cover all shipping costs for our members, just to show that level of support. Obviously a lot's going on. People are affected significantly, some not at all. I think we're all, well, at this point, all affected in some capacity. So just as an extra you know, way to show support, we just covered all shipping. So the question was, what will we expense? And it, I think we'd all love to offer free shipping every single day. Um, I don't think we'd have any whiskey left. And as you can see right now, our site is, is pretty low and we're, we're all waiting for the, the new art turn to come. Uh, but in essence, as a small business, you know, we, those, the cost is, it doesn't go nowhere. We, we've incurred that ourselves. We've taken all of that. Um, so every dollar that would be otherwise spent on shipping and we've just paid for, and that's an extraordinary, extraordinary cost uh, for us, uh, for our club. And, you know, especially in a time when I think a lot of businesses are really sort of making cuts here and there, we've, let's, we kind of ramped it up and took a gamble. And anyway, that was, we wanted to do that. So unfortunately we're not extending that now. Uh, we appreciate that, that everybody was really into that and, and use the opportunity um, to, to kind of order more whiskey for themselves and, and spend some time exploring those. 
But I'll just, I just want to be very transparent you know, on our end, because we are a very small company here in the US. Uh, we may be the world's largest whiskey club, but as a business, we, we try to operate lean and, and do things right. So yeah, so unfortunately we're not extending it now. Um, and I'm seeing more people asking that question too. Yeah. I'm addressing it. So, um, so that, so that's that. But nonetheless, I think we'll have some really cool things going on that will make it really exciting moving forward. I should also mention, you know, you always have the chance to bundle multiple bottles together. Uh, so our team can also hold something. If you see something on the on the site, or if you call us up, you'd like something, we can put that on hold for you up to thirty days. And if something later comes down the road that you want to bundle, because it is you do save a bit when you combine multiple bottles on shipping. We can do that for you as well. So we, we try to work with, I, I just want to address, I know it's a bit, it's a big, uh, big ask out there. So we try to address that and help our members as best as we can when it comes to managing the costs. And I hope you guys understand why we can't do it forever, but, but really appreciate that you guys were into it for the time. So, um, yeah. Sunday evening, Scott, that was an amazing gesture covering shipping. Thank you. Yeah. I, uh, but I think we could all understand. Yeah, again, just to, not to be redundant, but we'd love to do it forever. I think the reality is we would no longer be able to offer whiskey. I don't think we'd, we'd be able to stay in business. Uh, that's just from the, my, the way I see things. But um, anyway, all right. All right. That's my, that's my shipping spiel, shipping spiel, <laughs> uh, which is, uh, anyway. So number four? Yeah, number four. So, all right. Big swirl. Big, so yes, can you show that bottle? So, okay, I think a lot of you guys have Scotch Says Dummies. Uh, I think, I think actually Scotch Says Dummies just put up a little review on YouTube. Go check it out. But uh, I guess we'll be providing ours in real time right now. But Big Swirl is a bit of an enigma for us. You know, if you look at the bottle, I mean, it's it's fundamentally different from our others. It is very it's different. Incredible. It's our latest, well, I should say was our latest uh, experimental blend. And so obviously we've been talking about single cask whiskeys and that's the, the core of what Scotch Whiskey Society does is find these remarkable casks from all over the world and then really just bottle them straight as they are. Um, but I think if you imagine, put yourself in the position of somebody who has a dream job of managing all these casks and there are tens of thousands at this point, eventually you know, you, you're seeing all these casks come through and if you're any bit creative, I think you'd want to start playing around a little bit. And so that's what Ewan Campbell did, who was our spirits manager, uh, who began as a bartender at the vaults in Leith, our headquarters, and was quickly realized that he has a fantastic palate and is now the spirits manager. And, and he just kind of off the cuff experimented a few years back, blending something. Uh, and we were a little cautious. Do we put this out? Do we put it not? We, we, we pulled you know, our members to say, hey, would you like to try a blend? Just again, it's an experimental thing. It's not the direction we're taking the club, but uh, was fantastic, and the whiskey was remarkable. Uh, it was called Exotic Cargo, and we followed up the, with with Peat Fairy, which is a peat blend. And so this is another one. So this is not a single cask; it is a blend, essentially of, and it's a weird process. It, it was it was first filled bourbon barrels, our American American oak matured whiskeys, blended together with a selection of sherry casks. I think predominantly Spanish oak sherry casks. Yeah. Then those were blended together and then vatted in American oak first fill cherry hogsheads. Is that correct? I think it was a hogshead. And um, yeah. it says it says cherry casks, but first fill American oak. So yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. So this is 50% ABV, um, and I can read the little tasting notes on the back. Let's see. So this says a classical sherry mature profile that burst initially with aromas of red berry compote wine gums, which I was just eating the other day. I love those. Um, freshly brewed coffee, polished hardwoods, exotic spice mix, toasted nuts, and brown toast spread with treacle. A splash of water brings nuances of wet leaves, sugar, sesame oil, black cumin seeds, lemon peel, toasted wood, rye bread, and bitter chocolate. In the mouth, it's a big swirl of notes. <laughs> it's a wee swirl. Right, a wee swirl. It's a wee swirl of notes of dried fruits, red licorice, damp earth, roasted chestnuts, milk chocolate, buttermints, and fig rolls. Some reduction unleashes flavors of coffee and walnut cake, cola cubes, cherry syrup, and lingering warmth of fruity red chili. Uh, can you repeat that? <laughs> just kidding. I'm just kidding. That was a... Uh... Yeah, so that's there's a lot going on here, and yeah, sounds like it. When you blend the you know, American oak with the cherry oak, 
well, we, well, there's two types of cherry. There's the presumably Spanish oak and then American oak. And then those were all blended together and then vatted into American oak sherry cast. So there's a lot going on and obviously it's it's different. So the ABV on this one is, is not cast strength, but it's 50%. Right. Which, which all of the blended, all of the blended experiments are at 50%. Yeah, and at 50%, it's still non-chill filtered. Um, obviously, they're all every society whiskey is naturally colored, and it's not chill filtered, so it's it's more natural. But it, it was reduced simply because in the tasting process, uh, the tasting panel just in taste they tasted different samples at different ABVs, and had determined that 50% was the right one for this one in the blind tasting. And it just so happens that the other ones have also been 50%. So there must be something with with that ABV yeah. style of whiskey. Yeah. Uh, do, you, Lynn, do you know what cast codes went into Big Twelve? Unfortunately, we don't. That that we don't fully disclose just yet, and I'm not entirely sure myself. Like if I were to smell this blindly, it is just an explosion of sherry. So they've got that. <laughs> Griffin Wright says if the description doesn't involve a tugboat, I'm out. That's great. <laughs> and talk about what we were talking about earlier. Uh, great to see you. Hope you come back to Detroit, Griffin. I, I, yes, I would love to come back into Detroit for obvious reasons. We've had to sort of put our in-person tastings on hold, um, but we had a fantastic time there. I, I was there personally hosting a group, and yes, as soon as we can get back, we absolutely will be. Uh, Sunday evening scotch. I had a glass of Big Squirrel last evening. Really, really nice stuff. Should have grabbed a second bottle while it was still around. That is the blessing and curse with our whiskeys. You know, it's limited limited numbers uh, in terms of bottle quantity. But look, the good thing is one door closes, another one opens. And so I think we have some more more coming down the line. I, it's so hard not to reveal, but uh, <laughs> I'm really, really, I'm really excited for what's coming out soon. Anyway. So. This is like very spicy to me. This drinks higher than 50% to me. Yeah, there's, yeah, it's intense. I, I mean, it's tough yeah. because we started off at 62.3% and then sort of went down. Now we're at 50% and obviously right. the palate's a little warmed up, you know, but it's, 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 it's intense. Yeah. This is still very forward. Yeah. I'm going to add water. Anyway, Chipstone is out. Thanks for coming in. Um, hope to see you next time. We'll be doing this on Monday night. Bob, thanks again for coming out. Um, appreciate it, guys. Yeah, we're, we're on the hour mark. We'll be wrapping up here shortly. But this is a uh, big swirl. Reminds me of the Quinta Rubin 12 here, which is the Glen Morangy. That's interesting, yeah. Because that, the Quinta Rubin is, uh, is that the port? It's the port finished, I think. So it has a wine note, but it's that's also very well balanced between American and yeah, British. Yeah, I think I can see that. Yeah, it's very like luscious and there's you it's just it's classic sherry across the palate. Um very velvety. It's like a Christmas dram. So I can see the the Quinta Rubin comparison how it could definitely Oh yeah. Yeah. It's like dessert. This is a good dessert whiskey. This is a good after meal like oh. sit down with a little bit of chocolate. This is perfect for that. I'm just left in that bottle. I might, I might have to barter. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> this is what I'm working with. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm done with this one. Um, Clark, apparently, Clark, nice work. Have a, have a fun week. Thanks for tuning in, Clark, as always. Thank Good you. See my you are closer to Glendronach 18 Oloroso cask. Yeah, I mean the Oloroso sherry is, is the influence, but you know, the Glendronach, that's that's really that's full term sherry. This is a really well balanced you know, yeah. in between. Um Isaac says they did a head to head with McCon 15 double double cask, and they, they share some similarities as well. Makes sense in that, you know, predominantly space side, American oak and sherry oak as well. Really, really balanced, I think, is the key. And it would be interesting to taste this side by side with a glass of actual sherry. Like to taste this with an Oloroso or a Pedro Jimenez and see if that intensifies anything. Well, we might have to uh, do that for our next or maybe maybe we'll yeah, I guess look, let's just let's leave it. That's a good point, Jenna. And I mean, on that note, you know, this virtual vaults is just for you guys. So 
I'd be interested to hear what do you want to see? What would you like to see moving forward? We have nothing but you know love for doing this, and you know, and that, since we're not currently on the road hosting events, we're going to be doing these virtual tastings. And so, as far as I'm concerned, we can try to guess what you guys want to want to see and what you'd enjoy yeah. doing. But please, you know, chime in and, and tell us what you like, you know, because I think really feedback will drive what what this experience becomes. Yeah, absolutely. And if there's anything you want to know, you want to learn, um, Ben and I are, are happy to to share our thoughts on it. So I'm in, I'm into this one a lot. You know, and yeah. I, I know it was really, really popular amongst members when we poured at our tastings, which was what, well, February at this point, uh, our February outturn tastings, we featured Big Squirrel, and that was one of the more popular whiskeys of the evenings. I can see why. Yeah. 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 This is a great, I got to taste this with chocolate later. Yeah. <laughs> Emery says rum, Armagnac, cognac, and grain spirits. Okay. If, if that's related to sort of a, a topic, yeah, we'd be happy to, obviously, yeah. you know, we, we, bottle of their spirits as well. Most of it's scotch whiskey, but we're really go beyond that as well. So uh, we'd love to, I'd be happy to, to feature those. Um, Dram send, session. Us send us a wee sample. <laughs> we're, we're gonna I know, I logistically, <laughs> yeah, logistically, it's not always possible, but you know, what we can at least do is we'll be announcing these in advance and we'll tell you what we'll be enjoying. Um, and then that way, look, if, if something strikes your fancy, uh, just a wee bit, uh, you can have a chance to order the bottles and participate. Yeah, you know, we'll, we'll plan them out so you have time to order it and have it delivered. Um, so I do yeah. miss the outturn previews. Zero page X. So do we. Very yeah. much so. Yeah, Rick Rowe says, I can't wait to do this in person. Thank you, Jen and Ben. Got to run. Thanks, Rick. Thank you, Rick. Zero page says, I miss the outturn previews. I think we all do. And like, fortunately, we'll, we'll be back together in person soon. Um, I'm really grateful that you guys are all, you know, come in here participating and this yeah. is really i think making the whole experience of quarantine that much more bearable so yes. um anyway do you any closing remarks jenna you want to you want to share what do you, what do you think um, yeah i just i i as we're all kind of you know stuck in our houses for for good reason we have to be um to to keep us all safe you know just just try and stay as positive as you can um you know there is light at the end of this tunnel even if it's a, a ways away um but if there's anything that we can do to help you, you know, with whiskey or you need recommendations or, you know, help with what you have, please call us. Um, when you call our number, it's myself, Zach, Ben, um, Brianna, who is also incredible, who's picking up the phone and, and we're happy to help. So um, don't be shy about using the phone and giving us a call. So. Yeah. Thank you all for, for tuning in. Uh, we'll be back on Monday and we will be announcing our full schedule soon. Um, so, yeah. Thanks again. So, Jenna, cheers, as always. Good seeing you. Oh, I don't have whiskey in my glass. Oh, well. Oh, no. <laughs> run the remaining here. I'll just do this. This is sacrilege, or maybe it's not because we finished with the drink. But final note, which yeah. is uh, not necessarily a society-sanctioned action, but I've just blended the first three together into a dram. And so uh, let's just say blending requires a little bit more skill than that. So. <laughs> <laughs> a bit of an odd one, but cheers. All right. Cheers. Thank you guys so much for have a good, have a good night.